to talk about hackers. It's a term that has been mislabeled, misused, misconstrued a lot over the years. The origin of the term uh, is complicated, but ultimately the concept of hacking is how do I make something do something it's not supposed to? How do I make it do something that it wasn't designed for? This happens all the time in pharmaceuticals. This happens all the time with uh, industrial equipment. This happens all the time with industrial products. This is a product that wasn't made for this application, but it works fantastic for this application. A great example is there is a piece of software that was developed in Japan for pastry recognition. They developed AI that recognized what the pastries were so that when they scan them under a camera, it detected what the pastry was and billed the customer accordingly because apparently the pastry market in Japan is amazingly complex. You can go to a bakery, there's hundreds and hundreds of different products, some of which are very close to each other. But a doctor realized that cancer cells looked so much like pastries in the way that the AI recognized it. So they turned the AI engine, same engine that was programmed and trained on bakery products, to look at cancer cells. And right out of the box, its detection rate was around 90% accurate. That's taking a product that was built for something else and made into a product for a completely different industry. In the old days, there was a hacker by the name of Captain Crunch. Technically, he was a freaker, uh, and those are phone freakers, people that would manipulate the phone system. You know, early internet, everything was running on phones. And the original phone system ran on 2600, mega, 2600 hertz, and the frequency of the whistle that came in the Captain Crunch cereal box operated on the same command control frequency that allowed them to interact with the phone system itself. This allowed him to effectively dictate all sorts of things inside the phone system from a payphone. Uh, it gets really complicated. There's blue ba boxes and black boxes and red boxes and there's the, the original whistle and none of this stuff works anymore. But you used to be able to do all sorts of things. The movie Hackers kind of has a segment about it, how you can put all the, 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 your quarters in, put $5 in, record the tones the coins make, get the coins ejected, and then you could just play the tones back from a recorder. Those were real hacks. Those were real things that happened. But it wasn't hacking, it was freaking. Fast forward to today, the term hackers is about people breaking things. People breaking into things. And... A lot of people wonder, who are they? Who are hackers? Well, technically, I, I'm a hacker. I'm, I'm a hacker that worked for the DOD. Uh, was I hacking for the DOD? Eh, not really. Sometimes, but not. That really wasn't my primary job. Because there was a lot of times I had to do something that was not what it was meant for. We had to come up with innovative solutions. We had to come up with interesting tools, techniques, procedures. We had to do things that were not what the original product was invented for. That's hacking. But as far as breaking into security systems, uh, breaking past passwords, uh, getting into things I shouldn't get into, yeah, I did that too, but maybe not at the level that that term implies because the term has this movie-esque uh, you know weirdness to it nowadays and the people who are hacking are sometimes very much like me the people who are hacking are very much sometimes like just some guy at a computer shop sometimes it literally is a guy in a in a, in a basement at, at his parents house uh, at the same time very often these are cybersecurity professionals that are training their skills and abilities to help defend their customers. So I wanna go over some of who the hackers are. Let's start with 
Script kitties. Script kitties is a term where I have a script that does the thing I want it to do. I run, I download this script, I run the script, and it hacks Hotmail. Well, I'm not a hacker. I didn't make the script. I don't know what the script does. Uh, I just know that it gets the job done. It's a tool for me. I didn't make the tool, so I'm not really an advanced hacker, per se. I'm just a, a skitty, which is a, a slang term for script kitty. Uh, people who start to get into the real hacker realm are people who are making their own tools. People who know how the tool is made, how it's engineered, and what it's really doing. I, I pull down a Python script. It's importing TCP IP, which is the communication of most of the internet. And it's malforming some packets and it's sending them and it's getting the machine on the other side to send a response to me to tell me what kind of operating system it is. I'm, I'm fingerprinting the device. And then I'm going a layer deeper because my script then says, oh, you're reporting back to me that your server 2012. Now I'm going to run the second script that changes the packet that I send to it in a particular way malforming it a little bit more, and then it responds back with user accounts. You know, I'm enumerating it now. Knowing how to build that, knowing what it does, and enumerating, and those are, are more hacker skills. But then the hackers break out into their own groups. You've got white hat hackers, which are good guys, which are always good guys. You've got gray hat hackers, which are kind of white, kind of black. Black hat hackers, which is the typical movie kind of scenario that you see. Uh, if you watch Mr. Robot at all, the main character in Mr. Robot is definitely a gray hat hacker. He's a security professional by day, and he does some unscrupulous things by night. Uh, he's straddling that line. But there's other terminology, too. There's blue hackers and red hackers. Red hackers are often called red team members. They're constantly doing penetration testing. They're constantly trying to break into environments. Not because they're bad guys or good guys. You can be a white team hacker, a white hat hacker and a red team hacker at the same time. You've got blue team hackers, people who are working in defense and focusing on securing environments, which is very hard because there's thousands and thousands and thousands of things that need to be configured right and managed right. Then you've got more along the lines, uh, though, by the way, there is a purple team we'll call out, which is both red and, and blue, because uh, very often the red team people don't collaborate with the blue team people. It's a thing. Uh, whereas white, black, and gray hackers, more talk about the morality, not how they do it or what they do. Then you've got hacktivists. Hacktivists can fall into any of the other groups. They can be skitties. They can be white, gray, black. But they hack for a reason. They might not like your company. They might not like you. They might not like some post you made on the internet. There's a great example that I walked my employees through. There was a YouTube video of a doctor in Beverly Hills who threw his tenants out illegally. Uh, and it was illegal because he got fined and, and sentenced for it. Uh, then all of that information is on the internet. So it's very easy for someone like me to then say, hey, I don't feel this guy was punished enough. I'm going to punish him more. So I walked my employees through how I would do open source intelligence, and, and I did. He was the police filing report. I was able to pull out his full name, his middle name, all sorts of information about him. He's a doctor, so he's all over when it comes to licensing and other information. In the state of California, man, there's a lot of licensing requirements for the state of California. So I was able to find every business he's owned or ever owned, every place he's ever lived or ever lived, every phone number he has or has ever had, four different email addresses for him. Then from the email addresses, I was able to pivot and I was able to find a bunch of passwords from him. Uh, and then I could take all of that data and I could execute it into an attack. And it's just because I didn't like him. Because he was picking on college students or I was, he was picking on someone else. Now, of course, I didn't do any of that. I have no real opinion on the situation that he's in. But when you're posting on Facebook and you're posting on 
uh, all of these different websites, whether it's your local community pages, uh, your your newspaper has a website which probably has a comment section. Maybe you're commenting in YouTube. People might not like what you say, and they might decide to take action against you. That's hacktivism. It's not just people saying, hey, I don't like you because you're wearing fur, or I don't like you because you eat meat, or I don't like you because you uh, are supporting this, this comp the, well, supporting water rights, supporting right to repair, supporting whatever your politics are. Somebody might take offense and they might come after you. That's hacktivism. And it exists. It's a real thing. Just last week, uh, with the time frame that I'm filming this uh, is the startup of the situation in Israel and Palestine with the bombing. Well, I just had a, a client that we engaged with because their equipment got hacked purely to leave a political message all over their equipment about that situation. That's hacktivism. And you need to be aware of it because your industry might have some political affiliation that some hacktivists don't like. And the skill set for them is all over the board. Some of them are script kiddies, some of them are very serious political players with all sorts of very serious skill. So let's talk about the next one. And this is a huge one, the insider threat. The insider threat, you're already employed. You're already working there. They're already your employee. They're already your, your coworker. The insider threat is how Snowden did as much discovery as he did. He was working in the NSA. And while he was working at the NSA, he was not a system administrator, but he used social engineering, particular pieces of software, and he tricked people who were administrators into giving him their credentials, not intentionally, but he keylogged the computer. He keylogged the keyboard. He would create a problem and then have them come over and fix it. Then he had the password for the administrator accounts. Then he could start doing more exfiltration of data to his machine from the network and then from his machine out. Uh, certainly breaking the law. But insiders and whistleblowers are both, they're hackers. They're trying to take data that is your data as a business owner, your data as an employee, and try and use it for means that it was not intended for. That's hacking. Cut and dried. What they decide to do with that data is no longer in your control. You should have certain levels of data loss prevention. There's software that's built into the Microsoft suite that helps protect that. There's all sorts of ways to detect that people have plugged in USBs, copied PST files, copied files off their system. You can prevent that. But that's hacking. Insider threat, it's one of the biggest things that the US military trained us on while we were going overseas to work on DOD equipment, secret systems. The insider threat is serious because people are gonna walk out with that data, whether it's just a salesman walking out with your customer list or somebody walking out with intellectual property rights. It's a concern right now in university spaces and research organizations that people from other countries are coming in and they're taking data with them and going back home to their own countries to take that data, that intellectual property, that discovered research data, and try to use it for other things. So, above and beyond all of those, you have the true threats. The most powerful and skilled hackers in the world, and those are called APTs. They are state sponsored hackers. Now, I'm in Austin, Texas, I'm in America, and we have our own. Uh, the CIA, NSA, FBI, those would all be considered APTs. Do they have resources, money, capability to come at you with powerful tools, powerful research, powerful, expensive, paid people that are paid to continue to come at you and that's their job. When they wake up in the morning and they go to work, they're hacking you for eight hours. And then they go home and then somebody else replaces them to hack you for another eight hours. So on and so forth. APTs exist. 
all across the world. Nearly every country has an APT team. Whether they're good guys or bad guys or state-sponsored, APTs are typically fall into those two groups. You have state-sponsored hackers, which are working for governments, whether it's the UK or America or China or Russia. It doesn't matter the country. They're state-sponsored. And then you have, we're going to use the term, uh, the Bruce Waynes and the Batmans of the world. Batman a multi billion runs a multi billion dollar company called Wayne Tech, Wayne Corp, depending on which comic series you follow. But ultimately, he's a billionaire. Elon Musk could be an APT. Jeff Bezos from Amazon could be an APT. Bill Gates could be an APT. They have a huge amount of money. They have the capacity to hire good talent. And they can then hire other talent to develop tools and skills to hand them so that they can go out and do their job more effectively. There's nothing that separates Amazon or Microsoft or Google or any large tech company from being an APT than nation state. Maybe the nation state can warp the laws and change things and do some other clandestine stuff that you can't as a tech company. Maybe they can help you get passports or other pieces of information, falsify IDs and other bank information easier. But even then, why isn't HSBC or JP Morgan, uh, Goldman Sachs, they could have their own APT teams because all it takes is skill, capability, and money. If an APT is coming after your organization, unless you are one of the organizations that already has an APT team or a very serious cybersecurity team, you're in a lot of trouble. APTs are notorious for taking days, weeks, months. Some infrastructure has been hacked for years by APT teams. They dwell, they pivot, and they're good. They are not script kitties, and no script kitty is gonna stand up to an APT. They're gonna get ripped apart fast. So hopefully that kind of helps you break apart S script kitties, white hat, gray hat, black hat, red team, blue team, purple team, hacktivists, and what types of APTs exist out there. These are all individuals you need to protect yourself from because script kitties train themselves to try and get to higher levels. There are m millions of people in this world right now trying to get better at cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is the gold mine going forward. It's the job everybody wants. We're gonna double the number of devices connected to the internet in the next five years. We're only gonna increase IT staff an extra 10% to manage that doubling of devices. Cybersecurity professionals are only gonna increase 0.1%. Everybody's racing for that money because that money is guaranteed there's always going to be a need for those jobs it's cybersecurity is just going to get worse not better so watch the other videos learn how you can start protecting yourself from the most basic and some of the more complicated attacks that these types of hackers can throw at you thanks a lot hopefully this was educational hope you have a great day